human being with Iman with the Quran with Iman belief and with the Quran even then goes towards the direction of sin the practice of sin and insan is attracted to or has a desire to sin disobedience to oppose the principles and laws set down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to oppose or to go far from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to leave salah, to leave prayer, to reject worship deeds, to be immersed or involved in kharafat and loss, to run after unlawful women, to leave, disregard good places, to go far from good and upright and pious deeds, to run towards bad deeds, unlawful deeds. This all is happening today with lots of people, young boys, young youths, young people, older people even. And and in this way, they pass their lives, their time, their moments, their hours, their days. And it's apparent that due to these conditions and experiences, a person, a human being goes far from his Rabb, his Lord. He goes far from the reality of existence and the hereafter, what will occur in the hereafter. Because Allah and Allah's Nabi, Allah's Prophet ﷺ, to disobey them is to waste the precious life, the precious time of life, the precious moments of life. And the reason for this, the reason for this, to do all of these actions that have a, a, a massive impact. The reason for this, that has been presented to us, explained to us in reality, in Sa'an, is, is immersed in negligence, laziness. The Holy Prophet ﷺ stated that the ghaflat, which is negligence and laziness, is such a thing that it, uh, it creates you know, the layers the layer upon layer on the heart of a person. You know, veil by veil, curtain by curtain, or layer upon layer of darkness comes upon the heart of a person. Due to negligence and laziness, all of the good qualities of a human being, they start to diminish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled and put inside of us ni'mas and blessings and capacity and ability Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty has created insan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in us the capacity to absorb love and muhabbat and good things. Allah ta'ala's love and His nearness, we can attain the enjoyment of these things. Allah ta'ala has opened the doors for these things. But the reason we cannot uh, uh, get to and reach to Allah ta'ala's love and His qurb is due to negligence and laziness. And negligence uh, uh, is the layer upon layer of darkness on heart. So we don't realize what is the value and price of salah, of the dhikr of Allah, of the recitation of the Qur'an. We don't understand the value and enjoyment of these things. And what is the value of good deeds? The Holy Prophet ﷺ, if we practice his sunnah, what is the light, the nur you will attain? And negligence and laziness does not let us go towards these things. And the biggest thing that will give us a loss is, is this negligence, is laziness. Somebody asked or saw his friend in a dream and asked his friend, what did you attain and what did you lose in the hereafter? So the reply from the friend was that, I have gone, I have departed from this world, but I will give you nasiha, my friend. That the worst thing that gave me the loss in this world was negligence, time wasting and laziness. And due to these things, negligence, time wasting and laziness, I left the good deeds. This was one man's dream. He saw another person in the dream, he was given that message. Let's look at our pious predecessor, Hazrat Dhunnun Misri, rahmatullahi alayhi, great sheikh, passed away. 
In the history of Islam, when he passed, one of his students, one of his murids, saw his shaykh and asked the question. It was a vision, a dream. He said, what happened, shaykh, after you passed away in the grave? What occurred? What passed you by? And this happens. Allah Ta'ala shows sometimes. And mashallah, he was, a, he was a friend of Allah, a pious person, upright person. And he said that when I departed from this world, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me understand and, and appreciate so strongly that the time that was passed with negligence in the world. Can you imagine the wali of Allah, what would have been his negligence? Minimal. But what about us then in comparison? We are down. We are low in status. We, we, we backbite, we have anger, takabbur and pride and money, the love of the dunya, the world. Everything that is a restriction to reach close to Allah, to reach close to the reality of the hereafter, that is our beloved item in this world. Everything in the world that takes a person away from Allah and the reality of the hereafter is our beloved item in this world. We love those, their attractions. In other words, ibadat becomes drowned in those actions also. If we see the adab, the punishment of negligence and laziness and time wasting is a severe punishment for this. Severe. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated with regards to this that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi remember before I carry on, he came as rahim to this world. He came as rahmatul alameen to this world. And if we see his talimat, we look at his ikhalaq, look at his uh, everything, we look at his sunnah, we give it attention, then you will see that in everything Rasulullah was a rahmah, he was rahmatul lil alameen. If we pay attention to these things, in everything we will see the rahmah, the mercies. So this condition and this uh, status, and why is it even then that ghaflat and laziness and negligence has overtaken us? So what is the reason for this? Tell me. What is the cure that we can, uh, uh, we can undertake to cure our condition? We live in the environment, in the society. We try to collect, correct ourselves. Even then our situation is not correct. Even then we run after dunya, we run after the world. So what is the cure? Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated the cure for this. That a person akthara min dhikrihi. Rasulullah sallallahu has given us a solution. He's given us the, the method to overcome these issues in the world. In a few words, Rasulullah sallallahu gave us such a big cure. Such a big cure. Subhanallah. A solution. How to overcome the negligence, the laziness, the time wasting. That takes us towards... First I told you the bad effects of negligence and the loss we will attain in the hereafter. It will take us to destruction and loss. So أَكْثُرُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِهِ Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has given us the solution that there's one thing that can take you far from negligence and laziness and that is one action. And what is that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that in abundance, regularly, in high number, and the thing that will diminish the love of the items of the world is the remembrance of death. Remembering death in abundance. In other words, our disobedience and going far from deen the reason for this is negligence and time wasting and laziness. And the solution for this is to remember death in abundance. To remember death in abundance. Akhtarahum fi dhikrihi. And here we get the hint. Not the hint, but the direction. We get the, 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 the root that when you remember death and regularly, constantly, consistently, then the enjoyments of the world, the attractions of the world, the glitter of the world, when a person makes a house and he looks at his house, he's made it, he likes it, he feels enjoyment. When a person attains a higher rank in some organization, he feels enjoyment. When he starts counting the notes, you know, the fresh notes of money, he starts feeling enjoyment. When you taste the beautiful dishes on the tip of your tongue, there's enjoyment. A person, he's counting bundles of notes. Doesn't know if he's going to spend those notes, whether he's going to see them again, but he enjoys those things. So what is this point here? That to diminish, to reduce, eliminate these enjoyments and fake attractions, there's no benefit in these. What should we then remember in abundance? Mot, death. And how many people remember death? We hear the name of death, we don't like to hear the name of death. We don't know if we remember death once, at least once in the day we should remember death. Oh no, 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 don't talk to me about death. Moth, speak about the world. Why are you talking about death? Maybe after hearing this, some people will not like what I'm saying, dislike us. Oh, just talk, do dhikr, let's perform dhikr. Why do you speak about death and try to make us afraid of death and remember death? I'm not saying this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of Allah told us this. If today we wake up, alhamdulillah, until 
qiyamah you will sleep a nice sweet sleep but if we today wake up then the sleeping from tonight will be beautiful and sweet sleep and if we don't wake up today and remember death then the angels will keep us awake till the day of qiyamah with the severe scolding and the beats and this is what will happen so rasulullah has told us to remember death the see how does the world diminish or reduce in its attraction when you start remembering death. I remember something. I went to meet somebody in a hospital. I went to meet somebody in the hospital. He had cancer. And he was a rich person, wealthy person. I knew him from a long time. He was an old friend of mine. And I realized, I found out that he was ill. He was an owner of factories and industry, but a good person, good akhlaq, good conduct. And I had good links with him. In the world, we were friends. We had salam, dua, we were acquaintances. And I realized that he was ill. I was in Manchester. And I went to meet him, visit him, to ask about how he was. Went, I, went, I went a bit late. And he was getting the medical treatment. He was lying down on the bed. And he started to smile when he saw me. We had a lot of love between each other. And I met him with love. And we started speaking about old times, about occurrences. Then he laughed and said, he smiled, said, Hazrat Sahib, my life is just left a little bit. I said, what are you saying? He said, no, the doctors have given the answer that you, you know the doctors sometimes they suppress you. You've got this many days left or X months left or this many weeks left. He said, the surprising thing is that it's been declared that I've only got a bit of life. And the people in my household said, whatever he likes, start to feed him now and take and give him whatever dishes he likes, whatever he liked to eat. The family member said, but he said, now I don't even want to eat. I don't even have the enjoyment. MashaAllah, he was strong. He used to do dhikr and afkar. MashaAllah, deendar. So when you realize about death, then would you want to taste the death? Today what we like and prefer. We know that death is there. Will we start eating what we like? If you ask somebody who knows he's about to die maybe, and when the hukam has been given, that you've got two days left and after that you'll be executed for example. Or after X number of hours you'll be executed, hanged by the rope. And you present to him beautiful dishes, nice beautiful new car keys, the keys for a big mansion, or trays of gold and jewels and money. Will he feel the taste and enjoyment of these attractions of the world? Will he understand the glitter and the glow of these things? This is the reality. And this is the condition we have to instill into ourselves, into our hearts. This was given the direction to us by Rasulullah SAW. But it's been written when we're going to die. What's going to happen? Destiny. And very close that you cannot imagine how close death is. The example of death is that it is closer to you than many things. You know your blinks of the eyelid, they're further away th- from you than your death. But despite knowing this, why are we so far from death? We think death is so far, so far there's no limit to this thinking. Have you ever seen? What is the cure of mouth, of death? The, ki- the death is a cure. And how it takes you towards the reality. Has Anas radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that death Death, when a person remembers death regularly, then his sins diminish and the taste and enjoyments and attractions and glow and glitter of the world diminishes and reduces and is eliminated from his life. Yes, you know, we are traveling on the transport of the love of the world. And that starts to reduce when a person remembers death regularly. When he remembers death regularly. Example, Subhanallah. I'll give an example here of a person who when he remembers death regularly, how he goes away from the dark deeds, from the unlawful deeds, from the sins, from the attraction of the world. How death and when he remembers death and when she remembers death, I'll give the example here. The person, the example of a person who is about to be executed, hanged by the rope. Will he feel enjoyment and taste in the glitter of the world? in the attractive items that are presented and put around him. So this is the status of a mu'min. This this should be the condition of every believer, that death is so close, when he considers death is so close to him and remembers death regularly, then obviously everything around him he will consider as temporary. He won't enjoy things for too long that are around him. Physically, then he won't sin or she won't sin. They won't commit fraud. They won't steal. They won't unlawfully take things from somebody. They won't leave salah without any valid shari excuse. They won't do these things if they know that they are useless for them 
after death. So what's the reason that we go towards the wrong things? Is that we don't remember death. Let's experience the things in our life, for example, that we've experienced that. Because remember, the statements of the Prophet Muhammad are haq, they are truth, they are reality. And that's why he said that if you remember death, you will attain success. And the, the attractions of the world are there. They are reality, they're real. You may have experienced at some stage that somebody, for example, somebody dies, and people go to visit other people's, subhanAllah, because somebody's maybe died, and by chance, maybe somebody passed away in your family, or extended family. And what happens at that time? What is the position of us at that time? We are totally distressed, and shaitan, you know, uh, is not there, because people are remembering Allah, maybe you know, at that time, people don't want to eat, they don't want to talk and laugh and enjoy each other's company. And the people who come for condolences, they go towards the masjid and pray salah, and people are reading the juz of the Quran, and people are doing dua. Why? Because one person died. And at that time, the reality of death comes upon us, that he used to sit with us, and eat with us, and talk with us, and enjoy life life with us. He was our relative. We knew him. He was our friend. He was our pal. And I don't feel like sleeping now. I don't want to go to the shop. I don't want to work now. Just a few days after someone we know who has died. Maybe that day or a few days after. Whenever somebody dies, somebody who is in your family or somebody you knew or a friend or an acquaintance, and when you take them to the graveyard, there's this unique condition upon everyone. No one feels like wearing a tie and a suit and uh, aftershave and perfume on his body and get suity booted up and go there smartly to the graveyard. No, people are going in simple dress, simple attire, humbly, with sincerity. Isn't this the case? What changed everyone? What the saying of Rasulullah Wasallam is haq, my friends. When you've seen death or you heard of death, your whole environment around you for those few days changes. But if you remember death regularly, you would be like that consistently. Your whole life would be like this, wouldn't it? So this is the reality. The reason for this is that we go towards the sins and disobedience. And the reason for this is because we think that death is far. When you go to a house where this death is remembered, there will be not the attraction of the world, no backbiting, no slander. People will say tawbah. And when you stay with that person, you will read Quran, remember Allah, and recite Surah Yaseen. And all of the doors to Allah Ta'ala's mercy will open up. Young children will be praying salah, women will be praying salah. And as the death, they start to forget and it gets further away, they run back towards the glow and the glitter and the attractions of the world. But brothers, he had to die. That person had to die. My uncle had to die. My grandfather had to die. I am not going to die, am I? So why should I have to do things? That's why Rasulullah said that sometimes go and travel to the graveyard. Visit the graveyards and then you will see and remember such people are lying down in the graves. Go to the graveyards. Look at the personalities there. People used to quarrel and dispute. This is mine. That is mine. This portion is mine. Etc. This is the reality of remembering death. Visiting the graveyard. This is what happens. This is the conclusion. This is the effect. The result when a person visits the graveyard and he sees the reality of what is life and the time that he wasted. So, when we said this is mine, that is mine, all of these items are mine, these assets are mine, nothing is ours. Go to the graveyard, those people used to fight elections are buried there. They used to claim that this wealth is mine, this land is mine. Pride, argumentation, disputation, fasad, fitna. This happens. Experiences we see because the people of the dunya don't realize. We don't understand what is death. And the color of the world overwhelms us, surrounds us, envelopes us. Reason why? Because we don't remember death. We have forgotten death. So about this, Rasulullah said that if you want to become a true Muslim, that there's no cure in nothing for you except for what? Remember death. Remember death regularly, consistently, go to the graveyard, look at the people who are lying there, who have died and got buried there. Until yesterday they were with me, I was speaking to them, and it's fresh, the discussion over them. Yesterday morning he was speaking to me, today in the morning he was speaking to me, when I went into the masjid, and he was there, and then there was a name on the board, what's this? Last night I was speaking to him, he was fine, healthy, someone said he was healthy, muscular, he wasn't ill. And wasn't this the case? Yesterday, the day before you were with that person, but today his name is written on the board that his dinars are going to take place. I've seen with my own eyes. That mashallah we do dhikr in the masjids and there are various masjids that mashallah, the acquaintances and associates of us, and I see this, they're sitting in front of me. We shouldn't be afraid of this. We think, three months ago I met him, for example, I did salam. And we were sitting, he was sitting in front of me, I was sitting, Salam, Wa Alaikum Salam, you know him as well, you recognize his face, I can't remember his name. 
And I said, where do you live? He said, I read Quran, uh, Salah and Jamil Quran. MashaAllah, I'm happy to see you. I gave him da'wah for dhikr, invited him. He understood, he realized, appreciated and valued. Because nowadays it's very hard to explain to people what is dhikr, the benefits. Oh, is dhikr bid'a? Is it innovation? Am I doing shirk? Oh, am I uh, making partners with Allah? Allah Ta'ala has made this ibadah, this dhikr, this deed of dhikr, that there's no, no negativities if Allah says, remember me, however you would like, it's accepted and accepted. Don't fall into the traps and the whispers of shaitan, that this dhikr is not correct, shall I do it like this, or should I do it in this technique? No, reciting and remembering Allah Ta'ala's name can never be wrong. When you stick yourself to this, then the barakat and the blessings you will see, you will feel. Sometimes reciting loudly, sometimes lowly, softly, sometimes wherever you are in a different environment, you will enjoy. And you'll say, oh, these people are wasting their time telling me, trying to put me off dhikr. What a great deed, enjoyment and satisfaction I attained from this. So I did salam alaikum to him, wa alaikum salam. I shook his hand, I can't remember his name. I said, okay, no problem. I said, look, come once, at least once come to me on Thursday night. Come and join the gathering. You are invited. He said, okay, I will come. I said, solid promise? He said, yes, I will come. And on Thursday night, I'm looking around. Has he come? Has he left everything? And alhamdulillah, Thursday night, he was sitting at the back against the wall. I said, mashallah, he's come. And this name of Allah will, will attract him and pull him away from the wall and towards the gathering and sit amongst the people. Then he started to sit. Uh, Salman Saab, uh, mashallah, mashallah, he was a, a, a beautiful person, great person. He used to come regularly and sit MashaAllah, he was a good person. I thought maybe he was fit and he was regular in exercise. So think about this. That we think that due to exercise, that the, the life will extend. But sometimes it doesn't. It decreases. It doesn't matter how many eggs you eat. So you used to train, etc. And fitness. But even then, mouth is mouth. Nothing can stop mouth. Even the biggest of bodybuilders, Rustam, powerful, strong people left this world. And their graves are this world. And how much you extend your uh, body, you can do boxing and training and bodybuilding and, and tone up your muscles, but the death will come at the time that it has been assigned. So suddenly I saw that in the morning people were saying there was a board, Salman, uh, that he's going to, his janazah, Salah is going to be. I said, do you know him? The people asked me, don't you know him? I said, I don't know him. I came quickly for Salatul Janazah. Who can this be, this person? That I know as well. They said, you used to sit in your dhikr. Allahu Akbar. I, you cannot believe that this was a shock or surprise for me at that time. That for a while I sat down and closed my eyes and thought that this reality of life, death, I closed my eyes that how he used to meet me, how we met, how Allah Ta'ala was merciful to him, how he came to the gatherings of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance and dhikr and remembrance. And every time when he came to a majlis, when a person sits in the majlis and he departs from the gathering, Allah Ta'ala announces that angels bear witness, I've forgiven this person. I've forgiven this person. Subhanallah, I was happy that Allah Ta'ala had invited that person because it was Allah's invitation he accepted. Not mine or anyone else's. Not once, many times, several times on the night of Juma, he was forgiven due to the gathering of dhikr of Allah. Mashallah, he had nur on his body. And I felt like saying, how are you brother? Is everything okay? Are you fine? And this was the condition. Allah, the de- deceased person, he listens, who has come? Who has come to my janazah? Who's speaking? This happens. This is the reality so he grabbed an opportunity that came across him. When a person understands that this person is not giving me dawah, he's not telling me to come for salah, he's not saying, oh, I'll give you tabliq and bring a tabliq, brothers are not just quoting me for their sake. If you consider this is not a brother who's giving tabliq, rather it's Allah Ta'ala who's quoting me. Then inshallah, definitely straight away he will reach to the house of Allah and he'll realize that Allah has announced to me. Allah has invited me. Nobody calls nobody else. Allah Ta'ala assigns and gives the duty to the human beings, the believers that go and invite the people and invite them to my home. This is Allah Ta'ala's da'wah. MashaAllah, he will be sitting in Jannah and listening. Because MashaAllah, he was a dhakirin, he will be listening to us. Inshallah. And people, such lives, I feel so proud. What will be our situation tomorrow when we pass away? Will we succeed? When you see someone departing who's successful in the world as a believer, I feel so much then that he has departed. Alhamdulillah, he has surpassed the mountain heights. What will happen to us? Will we get such a good death? Will we go with ease into the grave and beyond? And this is our desire. So to remember death is a great action. Should we remember death or not? Tell me. Of course we should. Great gift of Allah. And with the, with the reward Allah Ta'ala has given this deed. So this is my ha- habit that when I speak about something, then I try to explain. I don't like leaving a subject half spoken, half explained. If I now finish off the subject today, then we will not enjoy it that we've sat here. Because we haven't remembered death. Can you pick up your hand and say, Hazrat, you spoke about the essence of attaining success, but how should we remember death? How do we do this? What is the methodology? What is the technique? Has this come in your mind today or not? 
Or do you think this is the end of the bayan? And I've just said that, remember death in abundance and you will succeed at the time of death and in the hereafter. No, how should we remember death? Alhamdulillah. We owe it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The master of Madinah tul Manawara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was rahmatul lil alameen. The mercy to the universe, to the whole of creation. He came here to explain to us and teach us how to save ourselves from the fire of hell. So how do we get a beautiful and successful hereafter. For this, Rasulullah SAW opened up the envelope of secrets that how do we become believers who remember death? You'll be amazed on the love and the shafqat of Rasulullah SAW. How will we attain this? How do we learn? How do we learn the method to remember death abundantly and regularly? Do you know where you will learn this? From the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Do you understand this? Aha! Today we are so far from the sunnah, we don't want to come near to the sunnah. Yes, evil inclinations don't allow us to come near to the sunnah. Forget it, people say, forget it. But where will we learn the method of remembering death? From one sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu By impl- implementing one specific sunnah, you will attain the remembrance of death, the action of remembering death. Has Hudayfa radiallahu anhu narrates this hadith. All of you know this. It's not that you don't know this. We all know this. I know this. You know this. And I'm reminding us all of this today. And these small words, we start with small statements so that even the smallest child can remember this and practice about this. And everybody will know this inshallah. Yes? So we knew this before, but today I will try to refresh your minds, to revitalize this practice. And this is the reminder that he teaches, he shows, he reminds and the person says, Ah, subhanAllah, he's told us something that we knew before, but he's reminded us in a simplistic way. So inshallah, I will explain to you in that simplistic way. My brothers... Brethren, Hazrat Hudayfa radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with them, narrates this hadith. He said that the Holy Prophet, the merciful, merciful Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa at the time when he used to go to his bed, and with his right hand, he would put his right palm under his uh, head, and he would turn to the right and recite the dua, Allahumma bi ismika amutu wa ahya. Isn't it? Do you remember this? Recite it loudly, Allahumma bi ismika. Read it loudly again. MashaAllah. Read the dua again. Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Allahu Akbar. Allah is great. And this is the cure. This is the solution. You will become a person who remembers death in abundance. So this one sunnah, this method of sleeping in the sunnah way. If you say, oh, this is just the sunnah way of sleeping, isn't it? Look at the cure of this solution, this method. The treasures contained within the sunnah of Rasulullah you cannot imagine. That when the Prophet used to lie down and recite this kalamah, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. That, oh Allah, I now am with your name preparing to go towards the small death. This is the meaning of this, isn't it? The essence of this. And Allah, with your name, I will awake after this small death. So death and awakening is with your permission and is your right. Allah, subhanallah. So when a mu'min, a believer, a Muslim, a believer practices on this, and this dua he recites and he goes to sleep, Nabi al Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he practices on the sunnah and he sleeps. The first I speak about death, then all the other fazail, the virtues of this are numerous in number. But what happens? That every day he will read this dua when he sleeps, and every day he is remembering death and going to sleep. He remembers death, doesn't he? Or she remembers death, doesn't she? This is the barakah of this. And when a believer every day before sleeping says, Allah, I'm going to die now. The small death. And that is the position of a believer at that time. It's the position of death. Look, you're lying down in your bed. Left and right, there's nothing. Lights are off. You're in the bed. The bed becomes a grave. If you put the sheet on front, in top of you, then it's totally like the coffin. Yes, when you're in a coffin or you're lowered into the grave, you're, it's the night time. You're lying down and your eyes open. And who are you remembering? You're remembering death. Does death remember at that time or not? Totally with ease, you're tired. You lie down on your bed. And who are you remembering? You are remembering death. And when you remember death, what do you say? You close your eyes. And you're saying that Allah, I'm going to die. And with what am I going to die? Allah, with your name, I'm about to die. By reciting your name, and I'm about to go into the small death. What a big practice, Allahu Akbar. That human being who practiced this is all his life. Every evening, every night he's about to sleep, he closes his eyes and says, Allah, I'm about to die. And with your name, Allah, I depart from this world towards the small death. And he carries on doing that, carrying on doing that. Carrying on. When that day ultimately comes, when he's departing from the world, the true death, at that time he will all say, Allah, with your name, I'm leaving this world. Allahu Akbar. So has he not remembered death? All his life and prepared for the ultimate death, the true death. Subhanallah, the benefit of this small hadith. Yes, so there are lots of fazail 
in this hadith. Many fadail. But I will say one more thing. What is in this? Allahumma bi ismika amut wa Allah. With your name, I'm about to pass away. With Allah's name, I am departing the world. Allah, I'm going towards this death, this small death, even if it's sleep. So when a person does an action with the name of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that whole action ibadah, worship, doesn't he? Allah ta'ala makes it what? Ibadah, worship. When you do any deed with Allah's name, Allah makes that deed worship. The barakat come into the action. The blessings come into the action. Allah ta'ala says clearly that the blessings come into the action. So, Allah Ta'ala says, My name is full of blessings. There's no greater name than mine. Full of blessings greater than mine. And so when you're sleeping, you're doing this dua, that Allah, I'm going towards death, because that's what I consider as death when we sleep. And Allah, I am going towards death with your name. I'm reciting your name. I'm starting with your name. So you're remembering death with Allah Ta'ala's name. So all night long, your sleep is ibadah. All night long, your sleep becomes ibadah, worship. And then after that, when you wake up, because Allah makes you wake up, you don't wake up, we don't wake up, I don't wake up. So when we go towards the true death at the end of our life, then we will also say, Allah, with your name, I'm dying. And if you're saying Allah's name and you're dying, then subhanallah, when you depart this world and die with Allah Ta'ala's name, the same way you did every night, just like every night when you died, the whole night long when you slept was the worship, then imagine that when you sleep and die in reality, then every moment after that through the grave and the hereafter will be worship for you. Will it not? Will it not? Qabr, the grave, day of hashr, resurrection, the, the challenges, the trials, the questioning, the reckoning, everything will become nur and ibadah for that person. What a practice we are doing. So the Muslim who practices all his life for death, will he ever die a wretched death? No. And he'll have blessings and barakat. The one a person remembers death regularly and goes to sleep, then he never remembers, he never forgets Allah. Because when you wake up, what do you say? Allah, when you slept, you said, Allahumma bismika amut wahiya. Another time, when you get up in the morning, you say, Allah, I am waking with your permission. Alhamdulillah. You say, Allah, praise be to you. All night long you read ibadah, you wake up in the morning, you recite the name of Allah, you recite the dua for waking up as well, and you start the day with what? With the name of Allah. And due to the barakah of that name in the day, all of the duties you perform that are not sins, all of those duties also will become transformed into good deeds. So there's a full circle, a full cycle. Your whole day is ibadah and worship, your whole night is worship. Aha. Great solution. And then every moment you will be remembering death. And the stamp is upon that person. He slept by remembering Allah. He died remembering Allah. And in the morning he wakes up remembering Allah. And his sins start to diminish. They reduce all his sins. Because all of this feeling and emotion of not remembering death, they diminish and disappear. Due to this one sunnah, the barakah of this one sunnah, his whole life becomes full of nur and light and blessings and virtues. Can you see how much barakah there is? Aha, so this is the dunya. I gave you the success in the world. And if we recite this and die and the true death comes, and when we depart this world, the true death with the name of Allah, then until the grave, the whole path becomes clear. The journey becomes clear and easy. When we sleep at night, we get up in the morning. But when we sleep the true death, when the true death comes, the ultimate death comes, and when we wake up and it will be the day of judgment, the whole will be destroyed and everybody will be standing there, the challenges will come, the questioning will come, the bridge of Sarat will come, the, all the tribulate, the trials will come. And because we said to Allah, Allah, with your name we are dying, and with your name we wake up, just like we woke up with Allah's name in the world. So when we wake up in our grave and in the rafter, we'll wake up with Allah Ta'ala's name, and until paradise, all of the trials and tests will become easy for us. And this is called, Subhanallah, Allahumma hasibna hisaban yasira. Allahu Akbar. Until Qiyamah, upon this one hadith you practice, until the day of judgment and beyond, due to the barakat of the name of Allah, you will succeed on every step. So my brothers, this is the barakah, the blessings of the sunnah, the blessings of the name of Allah. Uh, practicing on one sunnah, you attain everything. That's it. It's so great. So whenever we sleep, we should sleep with this method and technique and bring this whole hadith in front of us that where will we reach what success not just we're sleeping and we are free the whole life long it will give us benefit there will be goodness upon goodness upon goodness due to practicing this one sunnah and if all our lives we implement the sunnah different sunnah that what light and nur and greatness will come to our life let's do dua to Allah the Allah Ta'ala our whole life keep us in existence keep us in the service servanthood and the service of Rasulullah and allow us to remember you abundantly so that we can succeed. Ameen. Recite the Durood Sharif.